Um, yes, yeah, Adi, thanks. So thanks for coming on. And uh, yeah, I sometimes like what you just said. I, I sometimes feel the same way. I just sometimes feel so good just being in my own little world here for a little while and and you know kind of the whole thing i i recently about like a year ago i joined a a, a studio where i get to now interact with people on a daily basis and that's been really nice and all that but i ideally you know it's always just uh kind of you know just a, a notebook and and thinking and writing and doing doing <laughs> things every single day man so how you doing today man you doing good yeah uh i'm doing all right it's uh 9 30 a.m which is perfect time so i think we have like uh, about an hour before my daughter usually so from 6 30 to 7 a.m is like uh sightseeing territory but it's like not that she'll make up any time off <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so i tend to bang out a bunch of fighting before that happens so yeah otherwise please do you good family is doing good everyone's doing good oh yeah uh, my daughter is awesome Growing up so fast, it's, uh, it's ridiculous to see. Uh, I'm How old is she now? She's 19 uh, months old. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, That's I remember amazing, her man. Being, yeah. Just uh, I remember her being born. And like, uh, it's funny. I don't know. I don't know if I would have noticed this if I wasn't doing what I'm doing right now. She's writing. And like, is this practicing observation as a skill if you're a writer and you want to write better copy, write better content, anything? So I just keep mm-hmm. observing her. <laughs> and like, yeah. after, as I said, like after our chats, she'll get up, get up and I'll spend like three, four hours with her, just playing, seeing, uh, doing whatever. That is the time that I just notice what she's doing. She's doing a lot of stuff at any point in time. She's like, super busy. I don't even. It comes close to how busy she is and how busy her day is. Oh, and I need to eat this sock. Or I need to throw that uh, utensil. Or I want to pick that and keep it there and hide something somewhere. So it's like, huh. and That's just hilarious. seeing her progression, it's uh, kind of interestingly makes me a better alternate road. So I think you mm-hmm. like, human psychology doesn't change if you're 19 months old <laughs> or you're 90 years old, honestly. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> what is your, what is your, let's start there. What's your, what's your uh, morning routine look like? So you wake up early, you get to some, get some writing. Like, what is that uh, usually the morning routine look like now that you're juggling, you know, uh, a baby, well, not a baby, a kid, I should say. Uh, and, you know, you have a wife and, you know, family stuff. And now you're, you're also focused on some of the work you're doing. And I know you kind of, pivoted with some stuff we've talked about offline and so i'd love to kind of hear what what you're doing now and how it fits into your morning routine and, and what that looks like yeah man i used to have a very complicated morning routine when i started out like when i quit my job two years two plus years ago and i landed on twitter and i read a bunch of these morning routine fairs i was like oh yeah i need to get me some of that shit uh so <laughs> then i dropped up a bunch of complicated stuff I try as much as I could, like, meditation, this, that, and I've tried, I think, 50 routines from every other person on Twitter. These days, especially after the work of my daughter and the freelance, said, I have just, like, curled almost everything. My morning routine is dull as uh, shit, pardon me. It's nothing. <laughs> I just get up. Oh, uh, so I get up at an ungodly hour at my wife's all the... It's like you, you get up at night, like you don't even get up in the water. It's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, it's clever to hear. And the reason for that is just working backwards. And like, I'm pretty clear on my priorities now as it was travels, like two years ago. And I quit when I was pretty much like this laundry. So, like, I want to spend time with my daughter, like three, four hours when she wakes up, like, very feeling, very just doing goofy shit. So, before that, I like to write it out. This place that nobody's awake right now. They resist it like, like so yeah, with like absolute pain. Dark outside, cold, you get a cup of coffee. I pretty much do nothing. Like I just to wake myself up, I do some handwriting. Yeah. I have like a bunch of that to handwrite. And there's apart from just warming up my bed, of course. It's <laughs> like because yeah. I'm yeah. saying going you from like the first side, then thirty where I go there. I think I also push out randomly, I keep changing it just to get my blood pumping up and then I'll wake up and I'm like, okay, then I start writing that shit. 
<laughs> that's pretty much my morning routine. So yeah, I'll start. Yeah. I will at any point in time, like three, four, writing, calling, throwing out, child, child, so that something is always there. I tend to focus on having the first six to the night minutes on my own self. So I knew that. So I wrote a book recently, which is pretty daily. I'm finishing that for the past two months. Or I'm writing my emails, or I'm writing copy about myself. And then I shift to client work. And that's pretty much it. Like, you don't, <laughs> you really no. need a complex uh, setup. So, and at least I found that. Especially if you have a kid, you genuinely get to decide, okay, is this important? <laughs> because this is the only time that I have, and you don't have time to fast around anymore. <laughs> Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, and and that's uh, that's amazing. You spend a lot of, I mean, uh, just from from just hearing you talk right now. I mean, I, I knew this about you, but you spend a lot of time thinking and and writing and you know a lot of that stuff. Is that because I know we've talked before about it, and you know, you and I met um, in a in a writing course actually, yeah, but. They- how uh when did that become such a big part of your uh life in general not just your like morning routine or you know whatever but like how's that progression been of like starting to write and when did that start and and kind of how it's developed into you know it's developed into a business i mean you have clients you have other things going on and i want to hear more about the book as well obviously but what's that what's what's that been what's that component been like and and when did you really just like put you know, it sounds like I want to go ahead and say like 50, 60% of your day goes into like writing. It sounds like. Yeah. A lot of questions. There. So I just <laughs> answer. Yeah. The writing part. First. So I would think like when you met like in January 22 when I quit, when I came online and I did that code. I just published a bunch of writing for the first time online ever, like in my life. Mm-hmm. Once people reach out to me, it's like, okay, right, well, how do you do that? I was also thinking, why is it writing? I was thinking, blind question. <laughs> I always yeah. look at the explication where somebody says, and the answer to that was like, I, that was not the first time that I wrote. I, in my writing job, I've been writing, I'd already been writing in extensively for like six plus years, almost six, seven years out of my nine years, because there's a lot of writing involved in my job, surprisingly. And a lot of problems are, Presentations and shit is like documents, crafting documents, reviewing, editing them for clarity. Even though what I used to write was bring that bullshit for mm-hmm. the most part, it was just legal nonsense. But I had the habit of sitting down and writing long ass documents or editing really boring documents, like they hard to read. Yeah. And that actually burned me out, which is still the irony. Sometimes I think about it when I'm staring off into space, which I often do these days. It's like, how I learned this now so much that I know, and it's, it was one of the biggest reasons for my burnout, with banking, like, apart from dealing with boring people, he's just doing boring writing. It's, mm-hmm. it's awful. But boring or not, I actually was good at it. Just the term without the technique that, you know, I did my document, or please check this, or proof it, that shit, I was like, okay. So I came online. And I kind of got this permission. I, okay, I don't need to guys holy shit anymore. <laughs> Nobody's there yeah. to review like so. And <clears throat> it's uh yeah, there go with threats in my head. So I think I had the habit of writing to myself. And when I tried to I took control of my life, so to speak, at the end of twenty twenty mm-hmm. is like old. I started therapy is also something that really says. It yeah. has me a lot. And journaling was a big part. Oh, yeah. Like, I've journaled extensively for like three plus years from 2020 to mm-hmm. almost 2022. And now I do it on the fly. I don't have a schedule in for it. But back then, I was handwriting journaling. So I feel like no good choice. Just my security, everything in my brain. Mm-hmm. Really, writing <laughs> then changed from like okay, boring office writing to writing for myself. It's like journaling, it's clarifying what I want to do in my life. Then it came to the online writing and just Twitter content, fun stuff, random, absolutely no purpose. Then now it shifted to copywriting, which is okay. It's more directed. 
Yeah, you're writing emails, it's not time for your chance to learn things. Mm -hmm. You're writing ads. It's now, honestly, I don't see anything as separate. So to me, it's just uh, kind of become a part of my identity over the next so many years. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it, it's like I just write. Yeah, that's how I think. Yeah. Right. I don't think of myself out okay, there. I think it's, I might position myself as I offer services, offering emails, right? So, you know, mm -hmm. I don't think of myself, okay, I just write emails, I don't write this. To me, everything is just it's creating what you have in your head. Right. And uh, so my craft and my thinking is mostly focused on how can I clarify what is here and then transfer it to a page in the most clear and also kind of fun well because boring writing, as I said, it's like it's just boring. It's that shh. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I like that. I like that you don't separate, you know, these different kind of elements of writing, whether it's emails or uh, sales copy or whatever that, you know, whatever that topic of conversation is at the moment, like, it's all just like, this is just what I do. Um, and, and I think, I think that's kind of where things get, you know, for a lot of people to think about, you know, writing and, and different things. It's like, I never thought about writing from a writing perspective, but me getting into the, the tech side of things in like 2012 and being a project manager, pretty much all I did was do writing and try to explain people. to people, developers and designers, what needed to be yeah. done. You know, like, hey, I got to... I got to give them like the overview of why we're doing this project. I got to do this. Then I got to do this. And then they have to know exactly. Yeah. Like I had to take the client's thoughts, filter them through my brain and then filter them over to more of a technical, but like, there's this like whole process. Yeah. And man, I just didn't realize how much of that I was doing until I decided to say, Oh, I write now. Like I gave myself this, like, like you yeah. said, it started becoming a part of my identity. And I was like, what the fuck i've been doing this for like 15 years but i just never looked at it as like this is a core yeah. component of what i do and then and yeah. it's interesting how the mind sometimes doesn't connect that because it's just part of your day-to-day -day. and you know whether you're writing an email to your client or to a you know whatever that is you're still you're still using words on paper you're taking what's in your brain you put it on paper and now what you're doing outside of that is like, are you creating a service around your writing? Like, that's why I think I got a little bit confused with what, with myself was like, well, I don't write for people. I write for myself yeah. to explain things to people. I didn't write like emails for other people. I didn't write sales, yeah. you know, all that stuff. So I'm sorry, short. It's just all about kind of how you, I think how you look at it in your, in your mind and how it, you know, compartmentalizes that way. And when I started writing online is, was like, oh, I'm just writing to express myself and distill my thoughts and put ideas that. forward and give thoughts to people and different things like that. So that's always been kind of like an interesting, uh, you know, concept from, from that perspective. But yeah, man, that's, that's amazing. Tell me about the, tell me about this book that you're, you're, you know, writing or wrote. Um, I'm interested to hear a little bit more about the book. Oh, yeah. It was just a project that I picked up because uh, yeah, I developed a bug ever since I came online trying to do my own thing. Like if I don't have something going on the site, <laughs> apart yeah. from a very quick child, it's like, start creating less. It's like, what do I do in the first hour of the morning? It's like, yeah. I don't want to do client work in like, upon waking up. So I, I read a book. Uh, it's a very, I think one of the world's best thing in marketers. And I also on Twitter. And settled, uh, I started reading mm -hmm. these emails. I bought a bunch of books, uh, and it was really expensive ones. <laughs> and I read it, it was really good. It was just talking about documenting your expertise. So, um, so I have been working with this huge client. She's been on my email list. I was doing a different model. I, I write daily emails these days. And she's been on my list for almost two years and she knew that I wasn't freelancing. But when I started freelancing, she was the first person that I reached out to, like, you trying to work with me. Now I do offer these services to you. So like, yeah. And she was trying to launch a cohort around the channel that she has. She had like 150k subs back at the time, but a very tiny list of like 2,500 people. I was like, okay, let's focus on your list. Forget your YouTube. <laughs> and then we <clears throat> re-engaged the list, crafted a offer for an info product uh, and then I kind of drafted an entire launch strategy just to our email list uh, mm -hmm. and then we did that and that launched the pretty well 
we generated around 52k in like four days for for my tiny list for my offer got like 174 buyers in and overall it was pretty intense and a lot of fun and so i've been doing that i've done that since and i have another launch like coming up for a cohort now in like two weeks uh and i just enjoyed doing that more very lot like um, mm -hmm. which is open close email launch and i studied a lot on it and I tried it out obviously it did well so the book is basically case study for this launch and the reason for that is that i thought what, what i did why i did it what i see a lot of people do wrong especially on x it's like while there are legitimate experts on expert most of your devices i don't know where or where it comes from <laughs> because yeah. i've seen like and i showed an example of it there's a creator with like almost 300 followers that i saw do something exceptionally i don't know sabotaging for their own launch that i knew that i was not not true so it was mostly a short book uh around 60 70 pages uh on the launch framework that i use and how okay. it i to with examples from this uh so far and i just published it it's still getting cleaned up like i'm publishing it in stages because i've been perfecting and kind of polishing it forever so i like forget just get it out i still launched the pdf first then i got somebody to design the cover and i launched that again now i'm gonna publish it on amazon and that's gonna take another week because they have like complicated formatting requirements which is just annoying but it's what yeah so that's amazing. Congratulations, man. I, I'm, I'm really yeah, happy to so hear much. that. I'll make sure to, uh, uh, link to that, um, in the show notes when this goes, goes, uh, live. So, um, you know, if anybody it. does listen to it, they can, they can also find that if, if they need it. So, um, but how, what's been, let me ask you, uh, just in, in terms of, and I'm going to go ahead and just assume this and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but like, it sounds like your, your ADHD levels are just really high, kind of like mine. There's always like, you know, things fluctuating <laughs> back and forth and things are, you know, going well, on in your brain. And there's like five different things popping off at any given moment. Like, how do you, how do you sit down and control those thought processes and, and, and how do you like just really distill down down to that task that you want to get done in that very moment so one day it might be an email another day might be part of the book or whatever because i have a lot of this going on so i want some it, of the some of the secrets if you have any of how you you know put your like to me truthfully speaking like it, I, I don't know this is kind of like one of these like real like uh, i don't know superstitious things but to me it's very hard for me to work if I don't have these headphones on anymore, because they have uh, noise canceling and it just turns everything else off. And it's just me and whether it's my, you know, my notebook or it's my yeah. keyboard or whatever that is, like, how are you controlling the chaos? Uh, <laughs> that's a very good question. Honestly, I only am like partly <laughs> controlling yeah. it because it's, you can never uh, control the whole thing. You can never control yeah, the whole thing. <laughs> I, I, at least still now, like, Still fairly new in this journey. I, when I was talking about this instantly last night with my wife at Corsi. That's a work that I regularly do, like uh, uh, once, twice a week. And I was talking about the sales page that I have to write. I've been like procrastinating on it in a sense because I'm dealing of doing more research than I need to maybe and just adding it on the place. And uh, the deadline is approaching. It's not like on my head, but it's still there. <laughs> so she was like, uh, Maybe that's just part of your uh, creative process. And I'm like, ah, okay. I didn't think of it that way. Then she said, every person has their own process. Um, and she, uh, she was a person who writes copy at the highest level, like eight months a year, or tough thing. And that guy coaches me. And she says that he researches, then goes plays video games for two days. And comes back, researches, then goes plays video games again. And then suddenly he said, okay, I have now lots of information in my head. I'm playing video games. Now I want to write. And then he just sit for three days and like tag out a long sales letter. That's from a copy perspective. The process remains the same. I think he, that guy's been doing it for like nine years now. <laughs> it's, just, it's like more like leaning into the chaos of uh, creating and how you do it. It's, I just realized it's going to be very different from uh, what I do, you do, somebody else says. But there are, but I get your question. One is on the focus aspect of like, okay, knowing what to do. The other is on 
the writing process. So this was on the writing process. I think I've also developed a lot of those mental routines. I started going to a co-working space just to get like a couple of times a week to get like six, seven hours of content and interrupt time. So that's something my brain is now used to. Like that from here from coffee. And then it's like, okay, just six hours of not talking to anyone and being an anti-social asshole. I don't talk to anyone. <laughs> See, then be a bit of the old life. We're tidying on my laptop. And apart from that, uh, I think on the focus aspect, that's a harder thing to do. Is it just daily reminder, man. Like I, I kind of suck with a weekly review sort of stuff, but that's something that I do. Like I have like three, five things that I need to get done. Now if I front load them as much as possible in this morning slot, so that they do get done. Even if I get distracted during the rest of the day and do something else, and. Uh, that's mostly it and physical reminders like as i said like my wall that i stare at daily is not empty it's full of uh crazy post tips <laughs> that i use to remind myself like oh like let me just search it including this big ass no that no is a full a4 sheet and the reason that it's there is exactly what you said <laughs> i stare at it every day so I can't hit you know. Sorry, I had I I need made on me, but yeah. Uh, so you basically create your own chaos and you organize it in your own way, and you don't follow anybody else's routine. I I fucking love that, man. I fucking yeah, really I really respect. <laughs> yeah, same same here because, and I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes you see somebody, whether it's like a post or somebody tells you something that you're talking about, and you're just like oh, shit, I have that same problem and they have some sort of solution that works for them. And even though in that moment, it sounds really good and it's one of these things where you're just like, oh, I got the problem all figured out. I go home and I go take care of this and I'm going to do it. (laughs) And 90% of the time, it does not work for me the same way it works for that person. Absolutely. But it does plant a seed to say, oh, okay, so if that works for them, what is my itch that I'm starting to scratch? You know, that sort of thing. So it's just like this, like distillation process that you have to kind of go through and and realize like what works for you and what doesn't. So um, that's, I think, also the problem when it kind of going back to the writing side of things is like you can have, you know, a template that works for somebody that somebody created and you can look at it and say, oh, wow, that that's like great. But when you really gets down to it, it's like, that's, again, just a template that works for that person. It doesn't work for yeah. you because your brain works differently. Your process is different. You don't maybe start at the beginning of a story. You start at the bottom at yeah. the end and you work your way. Like, there's yeah. always just this different method to the madness. And I think uh, that's the other thing that I that I kind of uh, not only learned myself, but I also feel like I see with people all the time is that they're trying to achieve the same level of success by taking basically one-to-one what somebody else did and not implementing like they're trying to change their entire behavior in a way that that just they think once they change that the the road is paid for them and this whole thing it's like it's not (laughs) like you really just got to go in your own you got to drive your own car down your own road and figure it out from there i think yeah that's a great point i was something i only realized almost two years after the fact and that's yeah. especially true for people who are starting out and something i talk about like on the first maybe on the second third day of the book that i said is like i i give context before going into the framework and the first thing that i say is like be you get literally the same result you make five figures yeah. or ten years unlikely and yeah that's an odd thing to say at the start of a book that promises you <laughs> that you can make mm-hmm. big things happen mm-hmm. and the reason for that is context that's like my favorite word it's like you don't know a lot of shit that I did, which is not the yeah. last thing. I'll tell you the last thing, so that you can get the best possible result, for example. Yeah. Like you can do. Will it be this much? Will it be better? Will it be far? I don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. The point is yeah. you have to go and do the thing. That applies to the yeah. writing process and applies to growing Twitter or doing pretty much anything that is not script, like post your job. Like if you go have a defined JD and you're doing anything that is unscripted, you can't copy anyone. Like I've stopped doing that 
honestly with the past six months and my life just the impression and like my pain is obviously mm-hmm. better i learn it doesn't mean go 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 and learn spot something worse from them and then you think for the most part i will try to apply if it's somebody who yeah. is legitimate like for example i said ben sales just that's the he's he said if i do post now then i do the next step i'm doing that but then i didn't write a book which he exactly told me i wrote what i had or made sense for me what was easier for me and that's the point people get started you can use templates that's fine use templates to start this just start <laughs> if people my yeah. biggest thing is if you're special like if you're a beginner doing this if you're a pro obviously you have your own process people just get stuck on they want certainty if i yep. boil it down to everything and i have what i've started doing with everything it has just started and it takes time It like started leaning into the uncertain nature of everything with my routine and my mm-hmm. writing what will come out on any given day sometimes i hang out so much writing and like okay what the fuck did i just do oh i got and on the other days it will again be oh my god but from a different perspective then why can't i write five words <laughs> today right so right. you kind of have to go and genuinely sit with that uncertainty and let it wash over you in a sense <laughs> rather than yeah. trying to fix it at any point and please be strong really fine exactly so there's always there's always going to be that level of resistance especially with writing there's always going to be that something okay. else wants to pull you away while you're trying to do this thing because you need to you know you need to get it out but there's something else it might be you know it, it, i heard somebody say on a podcast not too long ago it's like uh i don't know if you uh read or listen to the book by Stephen Pressfield the war of art and th- yeah that's a uh, one of my favorite book I, exactly it's like one of those things where it's like anything that you're doing you start writing and there's something going to pull you away this you know uh, this fucking phone first and foremost that's like or if you see something in the corner and you're like oh i should probably clean that or i should there's always something else that you sh- you you want yeah, to do that- but when you know you should be doing this thing and it's that yeah. constant resistance that you're feeling it's coming from every angle it's coming from behind you in front of you to the side of you it's coming from every okay. single angle and and the the real thing is is like find find what that muse is for you find that like find that thing that you have to say to yourself like no do not look up do not look in that corner do not look in that corner like if that's what you have to tell yourself then that's your process and that's okay and yeah. at some point your mind is just going to know hey don't fucking look at that like just don't like there's no ifs buts or ands you know so um yeah it's just i don't know man the the mind like you said the the psychology even you were talking about your kid it's like the psychology of different things it's just like you really you really need to like unfuck your brain sometimes somehow like you really need to unfuck your brain absolutely again like you i don't know you've been doing this for a while so you say things that make me want to talk about a lot of things and speak on one is <laughs> like about unfucking yourself you can yeah. build your own routines like i have some simple double shit routine again i don't have anything fancy the timer for me like I, it's the walls that i have the biggest thing that i use in this policy i saw it is a fucking Timer. It's it's like the, the yeah. most common thing that I use like fifty times a day. Whenever I say to write any, not just write for like five hours from three to seven years, yeah. like okay, I write any more thirty minutes on the clock. During those thirty minutes, I can stare at my laptop. I can bang my head on the and switch it all in my chair. Only thing again, okay, this is something that I took from guys like seeing press and other. And I can't get it. <laughs> so yeah, I cannot. Yeah, I can. And the point is to get comfortable with that discomfort. You know, like, mm-hmm. yeah, and I've mm-hmm. done a lot. I still do. Sometimes I sit and just keep uh, fidgeting, fidgeting. So this time like, I don't have anything. And eventually, yeah. after five ten minutes, I'll just start writing bullshit. Mm-hmm. Genuinely, I'll just start writing what is in my going on in my head. Sometimes I literally like, okay, I can't write. I don't know what to write. And that will get through its journey. And then I'll start writing the email, and then I'll delete the first two paragraphs, and then I'm like, why did I just realize that is how it works? People, yeah. no one has to do that. People are like, okay, I can't write. I'm gonna die. So like, let's just quit and go to social media. Yeah, and one yeah. other thing is that it's so I, easy. Yeah, it's the easiest thing. Like because that discomfort is what makes you want to run away and go to something that's yeah. fun. Yeah. So one of the ways that I've unfucked my brain is like when you want to be a good writer, and that's most of what my daily routine is optimized towards. It's not optimized towards income. 
or uh, tiles or anything is just how can I write better because everything mm -hmm. flows down from the steel that I have. So it's like I have installed software and shit, and it's funny you need to do that today <laughs> just to be able to yeah. focus. But my day and my like my environmental environment is honestly KS3 crafted. I have software to drop the crap out of social media and emails and my apps also, they don't work. Sorry, the fact that they, for example, yeah. this, during this morning chart, I can't access email. I can't access Twitter. I can't access Telegram. I don't yeah. really use it. I can't open it. On my phone, I can't really be blocked. On my laptop, it'll be blocked. <laughs> so even, yeah. And the point is, I did that when I realized that even with the timer, I will sometimes get so uncomfortable that I will instinctively open it. Yeah. And like, oh, yeah. fuck off. So I'll just, i just remove the part that I have to exert any effort. So it's like, okay, somebody else is taking care of it. I mean, it's a software and it doesn't care about my field. So I have like fixed blocks where it will just block specific sites. And I just found that to be really easy. I don't mind anyone. My wife thinks that uh, I'm crazy because this is why you need to go to such extremes. I don't, I don't want to exert any willpower. I keep all yeah. my willpower and energy for the writing that I have to do. I don't want to think, oh, I should know what even because I can't. And that's like me. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. What do you use? Do you use Freedom App? Do you use the Freedom App? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I use Freedom Yeah. You yeah. just blow the shit out of everything. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, I, I, I love it, man. I, I think that's, uh, that's beautiful to hear that, you know, um, the, everybody wants to have the perfect setup and it's just not possible and nothing is perfect. No, your setup is not perfect. <laughs> yeah. Your writing is not perfect. Your fucking business is not perfect. Like nothing is fucking no, perfect. Really, like just is. deal with it on a day to day basis and, and yeah. fucking <laughs> just, you know, do your best. But, um, I, I did want to, um, you, you touched on something like sitting there for that 30 minutes on that timer and different things and, and not having obviously anything like open or anything like that. But when you, when you write, let's say your emails or, or, you know, you want to post something or whatever that might be, are you somebody that goes, uh, or how should I phrase this? Like you have kind of like a inspiration, like thing that you go through like you look at people's posts do you have like a swipe file of some sort do you have some sort of like email list or notes where you kind of keep things that caught your mind while you were reading something like do you have like a like a bucket of inspiration for things that you want to talk about or something that triggered you when maybe you're listening to a podcast or an audio book and you just kind of notate it down really quickly do you do you hold something like that or is it most of the time you'll just sit down and just kind of like stare at a wall or fidget with your pen or whatever else it is until something just hits you i'll stop my should i have a slight phrase yeah i just read about it so much but i am mostly out of the years and some yeah. sort of weird perfectionism. I don't because it's like, uh, who's going to organize it? I don't know how to organize it. These times. Like I have, I don't have a yeah. scale like, that I can go to. But I just have a lot of information. But mm -hmm. you know, it's not curated to an extent. So the best thing I do, like I don't do three. Uh, one thing that I've been doing is, is you know, slowly working by my matching mates. Uh, yeah. There's a concept. He calls homework for life. It's basically yes. noting down yes. so you are the moments on a daily basis. I read that about when I started my Twitter journey in like November of 2021. The first cohort that I joined, like the guy introduced me, I was like, okay, that's interesting. And I read the book. I haven't even finished the damn thing. And I just came on that concept and that sounded really interesting to me. So I started doing it. <laughs> that was one of the mm -hmm. first times that I was like, okay, this is okay, I do it. And I've been doing it ever since. <laughs> wow. November of 2021. Everything relates. Um, that thing has become automatic now. Mm -hmm. In the first three, four months, took me time, oh, 10 minutes, all those, there, there was nothing. Hey, before before you go on, explain to people that might not know that book. I know a lot of people have read that book. Yeah, sure. Explain really quickly, because I know the concept and I have a, I have a file in my notes, right? So I, yeah. I'll be honest with you. I fell off after a while. I was doing it every day and then yeah. like, just like, in, yeah. like a lot of different things. And now when you bring it up, it's like, oh man, I got to get back to doing that. So <laughs> just explain to people what it is and how you format it. It's very simple. It's just like, but tell me, tell me how, how you go about it and, and what you do with it. 
yeah, the basic concept is just that people say they don't have anything to share. So these interesting things. And uh, that's just not true. Like, as long as you're living life, there's always something interesting happening. It's just a matter of developing your perspective and lens of seeing those things and tying it to other ideas. So what it does is basically capture those story world evolves. And another big revelation that I had from reading that book was like stories don't need to be in big moments. You're like, okay, I quit my job. That's a big moment. You don't do that yeah. every day. <laughs> yeah. So what you don't do is play the game every day, for example, and have silly moments. That makes you think about life differently. It's a very tiny moment, genuinely. But it fundamentally changes something in your brain. And that happens to me almost on a daily basis. So, and I see that quite well. And it's basically capturing those small 5 second, 10 second moments and capturing them in a file because you won't remember. The human memory is always in terms of remembering moment. When you write them down, when you write them very briefly, you write cues about the moment. It's like, okay... My daughter did this, said this, and that is what I realized. It's like a one line, doesn't even have to be a sentence. It can just be words or cues or physical location. So that when you read it next time, when you're reviewing it, your brain will remember it. And that's how the memory works. I don't even do it now exactly. That's what the concept is from the book. You just take five minutes at the end of the day to review what was last so you were the moment. Maybe you'll have more, maybe, but you'll always have one, even if it's insignificant or feels that. Over time, I started doing it a bit differently. I kind of, kind of developed my own thing for it. Yeah. My notes are more detailed than my week's recommends. He recommends it to be shorter for ease of doing it so that people actually do it. But over time, since I've been doing it for almost two, two plus, two and a half years, I just write. And I don't do it at the end of the day. For me now, after so long, it's just real time. It's like, see, and it's really funny because when, when it is happening, my brain automatically goes, okay, this is something that you need to record because this is interesting. And I'm like, huh, why is this interesting? I'll record that also. So my notes are like three, four lines, which is going against a big set. Yeah. So that is the only thing that I have, which is recorded. And I even took it one step further that I have, and I don't format it. My thing is again, it's just messy as you. Is literally a text file with a date and bullet points. It's like, right? One, yeah. two, three, four, five. And I do it real time. I don't do it at the end of the day. Really up. Sort of day. Uh, right. Then I started doing it for other things that I regularly do. Apart from, like, my homework for life file is separate. This is just what I come up something interesting. Then I have a file that I started writing daily even for my steps. Around two, two and a half weeks, right? So I keep getting ideas for daily events, which is very closely related to this. So yeah. I have a daily email file, again, in a text note, which has now reached, I think, 20,000 words. <laughs> because wow. what I do there is not just writing the idea. Something comes to me when I'm on a walk, I just literally write the email. And it means the first draft, so it doesn't need to be seen by anyone. I've just got better write, okay, interesting idea. How can I link it to what I want to say? That's pretty much what I have. And I'll do it for clients also. If I get an idea, I'll have a file running. A Google mm-hmm. Doc or a very simple thing. Okay, this is a sales page I need to write. And I'll be doing something and get an idea. I'll just open the file and just jot down whatever comes to my mind. And sometimes, full like paragraphs come to me and that's the funny thing I've realized about writing. I read somewhere that like, ideas don't come from you. They come through you. And that's something yep. that I've realized each me because it's like I don't create them I don't know where they come from I'm like fucking uh, washing my hands <laughs> yeah yeah for example yeah. after lunch and then a big ass three year card headline and like will come to me and I'm like okay I need to rope this down right so no so I'll go on my right. phone and I'll ignore my wife when she's saying something and she'll get angry but I'll just like <laughs> write for five minutes and he had like five, six hundred words of I don't know where that came from, but it came. And then I wrote it down. That's it. He's yeah. messy and then I would like, but <laughs> again, I'm just accepting that. Maybe that is my process and I'm not as organized as I used to be back yeah. when I was a banker. I mean, like I used yeah. to have folders within subfolders within subfolders till like 50 subfolders. And like, I don't yeah. have any folders these days, which is pretty fun. So, <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it, man. Uh, that's that's so. Um, I love that you embraced 
the chaos in your oh, own yes. way and you create it your own. So uh, I, I want to give you major props because not, not that it, it, it seems so simple, but most people want to tailor them, their process to something, to somebody else, how somebody else is yeah. doing it. They're not willing to admit to themselves that their shit's just all over the place. And <laughs> I, I, I really value that. I really value that about your story because I think it goes a long way. I wrote something down uh, while you were just talking. Well, I wrote a couple things down. It, it's I have a lot of different guests on the podcast, and I'm, I'm <laughs> speaking from from just what popped in my head while you were talking. Sure. I get really, really fucking energized talking to you about writing, and I don't know what that is. I just want to. I literally just want to put that out as as like a statement <laughs> on this podcast that like there's this like writing That's awesome. in, in uh, writing in general. It gives me a lot of energy when I do it, when I find that like focus and it gives me like, but talking to somebody that does this on a daily basis, somebody that's dedicated themselves to the craft that's, and again, having that human aspect of like, Hey, my shit's all over the place. I do this, I do it this way. There is no format. It's my format. All these other things. I want to let you know, like, I, I don't even know how to phrase this, but like, there's something real about that that hits me a little bit differently. <laughs> and I, no joke, I literally I was like talking right here. Look, I even like double I, I underlined it. Like talking to Adi reminds me how much I love talking about writing. Like that literally <laughs> is a statement. And so I just wanted to oh, share awesome. that with you because because it just like that inspiration. No matter how far you're, thousands of miles away, but that inspiration, that that realness, like really has a uh, has an effect. And and it comes through in your writing on social media. It comes through in a lot of different ways. And I just want to tell you, like, that's really, really impactful. Oh, no. Yeah, that's a great comment. Uh, thank you so much. And just yeah. tying it to what we were saying, like, my brain is already registered. That is Tom. I will lose almost 45 minute conversation. Is the story that I will note for today because it, 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 this is how it works <laughs> yeah. in practice. Yeah. We talked exactly. about lots of it. All of it was interesting, but this is something that my very very shared is like, okay, this is interesting. And I've kind of, over time, honestly, developed a physical sense for it, which is the weirdest thing. Yeah. If like, yeah, yeah. you realize there is a story, my body will see yeah, like almost physically. Mm -hmm. Like my brain mm -hmm. wakes up and I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. pay attention to this shit. <laughs> it's time right. in that context. Right. And that can only be developed by just being crazy, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. have any. When you act me, great. I think that's you what have to embrace it. Maybe you feel because when I was better, I was absolutely brain dead. Like, yeah, I'm saying energy over the phone call is one of the hardest things that uh, I see. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. don't get it from most people. Like, I attend calls and I'm like half and mostly asleep, and most of the time I even right. paid. Like, I paid to be there, and since he, I like. Okay, that was your thought because you were boring as hell. So, right. So that's awesome because, uh, as I said, like most of what I do, I have a guiding principle for structuring my day outside of my other new duties for being a cool. Yeah. And that's just one question that I realized, all, I think, a couple of weeks ago. Is that, Will this help me write better? <laughs> you yeah. Quest. And like, yeah. everything is geared towards that question. If I speak it, Will it help me write better? No, so far I'm going to see. If yeah, I yeah. eat an extra cheese double pepperoni, will it help me write better? No, so, so don't eat it. So I have honestly overcome addiction because of this question. I didn't use it yeah. so pointedly. I started using it. I used to have like occasional drinks. I used to be a base drinker like in my banking list. Yeah. But then like, okay, a scotch every couple of days. Uh, on the week is like I'm doing something it's stressful let's have a whiskey then I have two whiskey the next day feeling I'm sick so I yep. have like along with obviously being responsible with other like this is help me right better I'm like no so I'm good so yeah. and I haven't yeah. had a drink in like almost a year now huh. it's a lot so it's it's just interesting <laughs> that's your else. north that's your north star that's like your 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 thing yeah. like every time you look up it's like is this yeah dude i love that yeah i absolutely love that um i want to touch on daily emails uh something that you said you do now on a regular basis 
um let me let me make a let me make a quick confession here uh really quickly i was writing a newsletter for uh and i i still do i can't say i don't write it uh i just haven't um something happened i don't know what it is i was sending out a weekly email and i just felt like maybe it was that thing that we talked about uh where i just felt like i was following somebody else's like imaginary okay. script of some sort something that you know hey you have to send it out every week you have to do this you have to do that and i just felt like if i was receiving these emails i wasn't getting excited anymore i was just kind of like uh -huh. you know there was just like kind of like dull things that i started talking about and i didn't want to do that anymore i didn't want to even if people decided to leave i just didn't want to do that anymore yes. now um how so you i know you went from writing weekly and now you're writing daily what's the what's the thought process behind that and why that shift and 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 on top of that um as a second question as a second layer how's that impacted like whether it's your business or your life or anything like that yeah uh that's a good question and i think the model that i got in the research which is meeting events was simple because for the big creators ago that is like i didn't know anything so i started doing it the most interesting guy for sort of thing because he's like the most prominent one or then the then eventually the thing that i realize is some people just write emails for trade meetings that's right my goal of writing emails for my list was to create something build a business mm -hmm. client essentially build offers around it that wasn't working for me i also got bored i reinvented really the newsletter a couple of times that's why i'm going with that i didn't know the concept of daily emails till like six seven months ago when I discovered a couple of copywriters, so this is a pretty common practice in like the digital like email marketers who are some of the best in the world. Uh, guys like Ben Chadley, for example, or, or another guy called Daniel Trussell. So they email every day. Sometimes during launch, they email even multiple times a day. I was very bothered by it. They're selling, soft selling their services in every email. But the big point is their emails are interesting to read even if I don't get uh, And they're there every day. <laughs> First, uh, it's just top of mind. It's good for mm -hmm. me from a purely business point of view because I follow a lot of people that are generally good. Whenever I go on the timeline, I'll see them and I'll get reminded of them. That's the funny part. But if they're in my inbox every day, I'm just reminded of them every day. And I don't get followed mm -hmm. by it because their emails are genuinely fun to read uh, from whatever perspective it's either it's spicy gossip or it's a fun story or it's an interesting take that helps me think better, whatever it is. Uh, and I kind of forget about the people that don't fail regularly. That's some of business point of view. From a writing point of view, then again, the fundamental thing we all start as a reply is like, the only way to write better is to write more. Yeah. Like the volume, I think, is a part of taking feedback is like the number one rule of uh, writing better. So I thought, like, I want to write emails for a living. Clients, whatever, and I want to try it generally better copy. So, what is the way that I can help my business and help my writing? Mm -hmm. craft and like the daily emails that fit perfectly into that because what it has done, and it's fairly recent. The change is like only two and a half. If this is my third week in second day, one of the things that has happened it's it's forced my perception to I like beaten it down kind of thing. Now it's something, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it stays down because it's like. Once I committed, I was hesitating to starting it because I was like, once I start, I just not going to stop. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and there's a mindset shift. So, and I find like almost two, three days that it's like 9.30 or 10 p.m. by which time I'm brain dead, but I have edit and send my email out. And I'll do that. And it'll be less than perfect. And I still have time. Because it's yeah. my health. And my writing time has reduced drastically. For example, like okay. I used to take four or five hours <laughs> when I was doing weekly emails sometimes, like perfectly statements. And now I typically write an email in like 20 minutes and then I edit it for 10. So, like, definitely under an hour on a bad day, but like 30, 35 minutes on a day. Like, and wow. the nature of the emails also changed. It's a different style of email, honestly. Multiple benefits Where... from writing better for myself, writing more, okay. be top of mind for people who want to listen from me, people who don't really. Yeah, uh, and with daily emails, you don't even have to worry about randomized metrics like, oh, what opens am I getting? What dates am I getting? Because it's there every day. 
it's like if somebody didn't open today they'll open tomorrow they'll open next week or they leave all of those outcomes are fine and wow. it helps me amazing refine my craft on like multiple levels you basically i'm telling stories short stories 300 400 words they're not even long emails they don't have to be long yeah so and i'm still studying that craft uh, so i don't know if that answers your question but it's no, just it does, it does. Okay. it's like committing to i'll send an email out every single day uh and it's good some of like every perspective apart from just the effort that is required so i usually mm-hmm. do it first thing in the morning then i'll draft it out or i'll draft it out while i'm walking which is a new process that i'm kind of experimenting with it's good so that it helps me get in that flow uh, i write a first draft very quickly and then i stream it out of it and then thank you so swing it beautiful and how many uh if you don't mind sharing and you can set up how many subscribers to your email do you have right now Oh, I get off my earlier list. <laughs> so I barely oh. have like a hundred and twenty subscribers right now. I had almost two thousand back when I was doing uh, the weekly thing, but uh, once it was geared towards the other writers because that's what I was talking about. And then I okay. actually also stopped writing in and started like a month or so because I just got tired of it and I didn't want to talk about it and I wasn't doing that. So uh, I started mm-hmm. three times on. So I already used my email list to. I'm trying to write kind of person. So I did like a small uh, PG anti-launch, what I said, where I was asking people to leave. They were like, go away. <laughs> because I'm going to do daily emails. Most people get figured by daily emails. So you don't have to stay. Okay. I don't want to spam you. You can go. People weren't leaving. People weren't opening. You weren't doing anything. So I did the opposite. Yeah. I said, if you want to stay tuned, listen. Uh, and I did that for like five, six days. Saying, uh, whoever came on is the people that are on. And then for the rest, I just said, okay. Uh, it was good times mm-hmm. and uh, hope you do well. So I kind of deleted everywhere from the list. So I'm yeah. rebuilding it up. Uh, that's how things the focus on because I I list it still pending for a price and I'll write a sales page for it when I have time. Uh, but right now it's a free bills <laughs> join yeah. and build list essentially. So yeah, you're reading really and, my and are you mostly? Are you mostly getting a lot of your subscribers through social or are there other channels that you're using to get people to subscribe? So at the moment, it's mostly Twitter. And I honestly have just started promoting it on the timeline because it's still getting face. It's pretty much at the starting stages right now. And okay. uh, I do content. I have it in my volume. On Twitter. Okay. And uh, I will also experiment with some paid ads on Twitter because okay. I know that don't cheat right now if you know what you're doing especially the kind yeah. of format uh, and uh, I have some plans for trying out other ways of doing it but yeah again with all my own projects that will get implemented over the next uh, couple of months it's like the social is a pretty good platform generally like generally if you have a following or some else it adds extra credibility but yeah so Organic is good, it's free, it's slower, but I do want yep. to, since I like restarted my whole thing of two years, so I'm gonna run some ads to it. So, but yeah, that copy is still running. So, yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. I, I love, uh, I love that. Um, yeah, man, you, you, uh, I, I love what you're doing. Like I said, thank you for, for energizing me with the talk about writing, and I feel like. This is one of these, like, oh, man, I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. I don't even have the right words for it. It's just going to be one of these things. I'm just going to have to uh, sit down and I took a couple quick notes. Um, I'm usually not one to uh, to write things down as I'm talking to somebody, but <laughs> I've just come to realize that I start, like, forgetting things sometimes. Yeah, and, like, oh, conversation goes from different points of different things Absolutely. family this and that and so i just like even one or two words or or like a time stamp or something to just be like go back to that and you know um and, and talk about that or something like that. so uh no man I, I really really appreciate it and um yeah man this is this has been an awesome conversation um i know your your daughter's probably going to be waking up in the next like five to ten minutes so i want to make sure you go uh <laughs> and spend time with her but yeah, Adi, thank you so much for, for coming on. And um, yeah, man, this has been awesome. And tell people, uh, you know, whoever decides to listen to this. I mean, like like I said, this is not a huge podcast. This is not, you know, yeah. I'm primarily 
I'm primarily doing this because I enjoy talking to people who are sure. creating things, whatever else it is. Um, I don't have any like sponsors. I don't have any of that stuff. I'm just solely love doing this. It gives me energy to talk to people, especially people like yourself who I've connected with over the years. Uh, we've had a previous conversation as well and yeah. all these other things. So um, tell people where they can, where they can find you and, and uh, you know, uh, anything about your business or your email list or anything that you want to share with people. Uh, feel free to let them know, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. Always a pleasure to chat with you, man. And, uh... Um, if you want to find out more about me, it's uh, at uh, ariwarmal.me. It's a d i v r l a dot m e, and that's like the page. And if I go get on my email list, that's where I do most of my writing these days. Or then go to search. That's yeah. You can reach out to me, chat with me if you want, whatever you want. I love it. I love it. Is that your book on here? Five figure launches from tiny email lists. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Awesome, man. Well, you let me know when, uh, when the, the, the hard cover or when you get published on Amazon or whatever you, uh, end up doing, let me know. I'll make sure awesome. to, you know, update it and we can go from there, but I, I really appreciate it, man. Thank you for your time and thank you for sharing, sharing your process and, and how you do things. And, uh, thanks, man. Really, really, uh, inspiring to chat with you, brother. Yes. Hey,